Effortless cool is a difficult thing to pull off. Steve McQueen managed it, Johnny Depp pulls it off quite nicely too. It requires the subject, to put it politely, not to give a damn about how they're perceived, despite the fact they know they're managing to look awesome. Few cars can manage it, and this is one, the Mercedes G-Class, or the G-Wagon, to his friends. The Mercedes Gelender Wagon, or cross-country vehicle, has been on the road since the late 70s. And while it's been there, it's seen decades of automotive design go by and thought, nah, I look good as it is, and then just carried on with its day. The G came to be in the early 70s when Mercedes began its development looking for a comfortable, safe, capable vehicle to take people across any terrain the earth could throw at it. The new model would not merely look like an off-road vehicle. It was tested in the Arctic Circle and the Sahara Desert. In 1979, production of the G began. There were two versions, a civilian version and a military version, and also it was licensed off to other companies, so technically you can have a Peugeot one of these in some bits of Africa and France. Now, the civilian one came in three flavours, short wheelbase, short wheelbase convertible, and long wheelbase. In 1980, Mercedes presented one of these to the Pope, albeit with a big dome on the back, so this was actually the Pope-mobile, and that's pretty cool. By 1986, over 50,000 G-Wagons had rolled out of the custom G facility in Graz. Now this is why it's worth mentioning that every single G-Wagon is hand-built. And you can sort of tell in a, in a rugged kind of way. I liken it to a birdhouse. It works and the roof keeps the water out, but still, you know it wasn't put together by an efficient machine. Anyway, back to the story. In 1990, the G-Wagon had a massive overhaul. Full-time four-wheel drive was added, as were three locking differentials. Also, it stopped officially being the G-Wagon and became the G-Class to fit in with Merck's naming structure. It also added a V8 to the lineup for the first time. In 2005, a frankly crazy G55 AMG was launched, and throughout the noughties, the G was nipped, tucked and modernised, but still kept its signature shape. 2012, though, is when things get a bit mad. A G65 AMG was launched. Now that comes with 604 brake horsepower and 738 pound-foot of torque from a twin-turbo V12. Thankfully though, there's another more restrained car. That's the G63 AMG. Now that comes with 537 brake horsepower and 561 pound-foot that comes from a far more sensible 5.5 litre twin-turbo V8. Around the same time, a 6x6 six-wheel drive version was announced, and you can get that with the 63 AMG engine in it. Do not to 60 in seven seconds. It's insane. The one we have, though, is the almost sensible one. It's the 350 Blue Tech. It's a diesel with 211 brake horsepower. It should make it good for Mother Nature, but its combined MPG of 25-ish isn't all that promising, neither is its 295 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide. Now if those numbers worry you, then these ones certainly will. The base price for this car is a fiver over £83,000, and the one we're in, with all its toys, is pushing a hundred grand. A driver's car? This ain't. It's not all that brisk, not to 62 miles an hour, it takes 9.1 seconds, so it'll trouble a Mini Cooper off the lights, but that's about it. Its top speed is 108 miles an hour, which isn't very fast at all. Now, it handles well enough, you know, it's nice and perky around town on the open road, but it's not that great at cornering, but you have to remember this is a car designed for crossing deserts, not for the corners at Silverstone. Now, we haven't had the chance to take it off-road, but I do have a couple of bits of anecdotal evidence as to its off-road pretensions. The first is a rather lovely story. It's the story of a chap named Gunther Holthoff. In 1989, he set off with his wife on an 18-month tour of Africa in his G-Wagon. He's still going. His wife passed away en route, but Gunther and Otto, his G, have covered 500,000 miles and visited 200 countries and not reported a single major breakdown. That's quite impressive. The other story though, well, that's not quite as promising. 
You see, in 2011, there was a press trip to Australia. Seven G-Wagons were to tackle the Canning Stock Trail. It's 1,150 miles of quite perilous outback. Now, six of the G-Wagons on the trip knackered their shock absorbers, and the only one that didn't was a military spec vehicle. So what you will about its drive, it still causes a stir. This is a car that was designed for crossing deserts, but now it crosses boundaries. Its look, its presence and its style still has people watching it, waiting for it, taking pictures of it, and it still has a massive fan base as well. And that's more than enough to justify its continued existence. Production is said to cease in 2015, but I'll wager that it'll continue. The G-Class was supposed to have been killed off numerous times over its lifetime. A replacement is even made in the form of the GL-Class, but its look, its charm and its capability continues to win it fans all over the world. So much so, it actually has the longest production run of any Mercedes ever. It's also worth noting that many of the world's militaries use these things. So while it travels the world, wins fans and keeps the peace, the G, well, it'll just keep doing what it does and it won't care what you think about it. And it'll do it effortlessly. Mm -hmm.